Hi there, I'm Sean Delman. In this video, I'll be reviewing Docalysis, an amazing AI document analysis tool and walking you through some of its important functions. Docalysis is AI-enabled software which allows you to chat and interact with documents using the power of AI. In seconds, you can get answers to questions that would ordinarily take spending many minutes or even hours of document review and analysis. If you regularly or even occasionally need to gain a quick understanding of document contents, this video is for you. At the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can get a discount coupon code, which will save you some money and give me a small commission. One of the best things about Docalysis is that it's totally free to use the basic version. As you can see on the website, there's also paid versions starting at $15 a month, $35 a month or more, in case you need to upload larger files and documents containing more than 600 pages, or need to ask more than 50 questions a month and have support by email or phone. To sign up, visit the website at www.docalysis.com, click the sign up button in the top right corner, and then enter your name, email address, and a unique password to use with Docalysis. Click on sign up and that's it. You now have access to the free version of Docalysis. Keep in mind that you'll get the best results by providing Docalysis with the highest quality document you have and you can't upload handwritten documents. If possible, for the best results, I recommend uploading PDF documents that were always in digital format and were never scanned from paper, because they'll be higher quality and easier for Docalysis to analyze. To get started, I'll drag and drop the document into Docalysis. It says, Hi, I'm Docalysis, your friendly document analysis bot. Give me a few seconds to finish analyzing your document. A few moments later, it says, I'm done analyzing your document. What do you want to know? From here, I can ask Docalysis whatever I want to know about the document. I'll start by asking, what is this document? And Docalysis will tell me. This document is a sample lease agreement for a shopping center. It is a shorter version of a longer shopping center lease agreement and is meant to simplify the process of leasing a retail space in a shopping center. Pages one to two. That's pretty impressive. This document is one that I've used before and that answer is absolutely correct. I also like how Docalysis provides page number references for where it's getting the information from. In this case, the first and second pages. Now I can ask something like, what must the landlord do under this agreement? Docalysis tells me that based on pages 14 and 15, under this lease, the landlord must maintain the structure of the foundations, subfloor and outer walls, excluding exterior storefronts and the glass component thereof, of the buildings comprising the center, maintain the common areas and common facilities in good order and repair, normal wear and tear excluded, 6.2 sub C, and carry out and complete the landlord's work at its own expense, clause 6.2 sub A. Docalysis even gives me clause numbers for these specific instances. This is very useful, and these pinpoint citations will make it easy for me to find what I'm looking for. Now I can ask, what does the document say about quiet enjoyment? Docalysis tells me that based on page 18, the document says that the landlord covenants with the tenant that if the tenant pays the rent and meets all the obligations and covenants of the lease, the landlord will not interrupt or disturb the tenant's peaceful possession and enjoyment of the premises during the lease term. Now I'll ask, who is responsible for repairs? Docalysis says, according to the lease agreement, the tenant is responsible for maintaining and keeping the premises in good repairs at all times during the lease term and will repair and restore forthwith any damage caused to the premises, regardless of the cause. However, the document also outlines circumstances under which the landlord will be responsible for making certain repairs, pages 13 to 16. I could go on and on showing you examples of the kinds of questions I can ask, but I think that this is enough to demonstrate how incredibly powerful and precise Docalysis is. Not only is Docalysis giving me the right information, it's also telling me where it's found in the document so that I can take a closer look. In only a few seconds, Docalysis is providing me with extremely useful and accurate answers. If I wasn't using Docalysis, I'd have to find this information manually by reading through it, using the table of contents, or by using word search functions. This would definitely take longer and be more cumbersome. Also, this document is only 52 pages long. If I was looking at a longer, more complex document, it would be even more difficult and time consuming to manually find answers to my questions. At the end of the day, the purpose of using Docalysis is to reduce the time it takes you to understand the contents of the documents and reduce the amount of energy that you need to spend thinking about it. Because it takes only a few minutes to start using Docalysis, I suggest that you simply start up and try it for yourself. I've been using Docalysis for a few months now and I regularly receive email updates from the development team 
telling me about how they're continually striving to make it even better by introducing new improvements and feature updates. Some recent improvements include supporting more file types such as .csv and .txt files and reducing chat message times to provide even faster responses. One of the best features that I've used already is the chat history, which keeps track of everything that I've asked for each of my documents. With the updates I've seen already, I'm confident that the Docalysis team will keep working to make the product even better. The only warnings that I'll make about using Docalysis are ones that I make for any AI-based software. First, when prompting Docalysis, know what your objectives are, ask clear and concise questions, use follow-up questions if need be, and be as detailed as possible. The answers that you'll get from Docalysis will directly correlate to what you're asking. If you don't use the right prompts or don't ask the right questions, you may not get the information that you're looking for. As the IT expression goes, garbage in, garbage out. Second, if you're using Docalysis to serve clients, be sure of your legal and ethical obligations and avoid including sensitive or harmful content and personal or confidential information. Third and lastly, I strongly recommend that you not use Docalysis as a sole source of information, don't assume perfect accuracy, avoid excessive dependence, and use the amazingly helpful pinpoint citations that Docalysis gives you to double check its results. While Docalysis is very powerful, as AI software, it has its limitations and it may sometimes generate incorrect answers depending on your documents and prompts. The story of Stephen A. Schwartz serves as an important warning on this point. If you haven't heard of Mr. Schwartz, he's a New York State lawyer who was caught using ChatGPT to produce a legal brief for a court case that was filled with fake legal citations and judicial opinions, all of which were generated by ChatGPT. To be fair to ChatGPT, it should have been clear to Mr. Schwartz that he shouldn't have used its contents without double checking, particularly if he was going to use it in court. Mr. Schwartz and his story represent a very serious cautionary tale, an example of why people shouldn't use AI without performing due diligence and checking results. While the purpose of using AI software like Docalysis is to help you speed up your process, it should never be completely relied upon to produce work product, and you still need to do at least some of your own thinking. Okay, so before I wrap up, if you liked this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If there's anything that you have questions about that I didn't cover in this video, please be sure to comment below and I'll respond to you as soon as I can. I know that I provided a high level view in this video, so if you'd like to see a deeper dive in the future, including best practices for producing prompts and specific ways that you can use Docalysis for different kinds of documents, please comment below and let me know. So with that, there you have it. That's my review of Docalysis. If you end up purchasing Docalysis, please contact me for a discount coupon code, which will save you money and give me a small commission at no cost to you. Thanks again for watching. As always, I'm Sean Delman.